वेलकम टॉपिक ग्लाकोमा लेट्स प्रोसीड द लेक्चर इन इंग्लिश glaucoma what is glaucoma first i will just uh, introduce the word or the term glaucoma after that we will move for the further explanation of the topic glaucoma is actually the disease of the eye in which uh, if the eye is affected by the this disease the glaucoma which is a progressive disease means with the time this disease aggravates or worsens so what is the output or the result of this disease a person becomes blind that's it very simple before i go for the complex explanation of the glaucoma or the types of the glaucoma first a person must know a little bit about the anatomy and physiology of the eye and later on we will move for the pharmacology of the glaucoma so what drugs are used to treat the glaucoma well first of all let's go through the anatomy of the eye eye is composed of three major coats three major coats or layer the very first the topmost that is covering or giving the shape to the eye or this shape is given by the layer noun is sclerotic layer the very topmost or the outermost layer so when it comes and bulges outside the front that you see is uh, called a cornea this is cornea so this is uh, giving the shape and the protection to the eye is if you go regarding the human being or regarding the cell so every cell or any specific part of the body first needs protection then it needs the blood supply and the third it needs is the sensitive uh, supply to that cell so the same the three things that i am going to discuss right now about the eye first thing i discussed a moment earlier that is protection second thing that is the blood supply and the third thing is nervous supply so the first one is protection is being done by the sclerotic layer and the second layer that is just providing the blood supply is known as a choroid well if we talk more specifically this layer is given the name as vular tract v u e a l vular tract which is further composed of choroid ciliary body iris this is called iris and as you know this is the lens and this is the pupil and the cornea so the choroid or vular vul tract this is just forming the choroid the second layer ciliary body and the iris these three are just put in the layer the second layer the second core that is vul tract or the choroid layer you can also say the second coat you can also give it the name as vascular coat the first one is giving uh, named as sclerotic coat the second one is given the name as a vascular coat and this one is nerve nervous coat or nerve supply so this is the vascular coat provided by choroid ciliary body and iris giving the blood supply to the eye and nervous supply this eye is provided by the nervous supply by the layer noun is retina or retina the third major layer and the very prominent layer that is supposed to, to do the sensation of the uh, anything that is given or present around means to do the visual sensation that is being done by retina or retina you can pronounce anyway so protection blood supply nervous supply protection by sclerotic layer blood supply by the vul tract or the vascular coat or you can also call it as choroid layer and third the major one nervous supply that it is done by the retina or retina so this is general anatomy and a little bit more 
you have two types of fluid and two chambers this is called the posterior chamber the anterior chamber the fluid present here is vitreous humor and present here is known as aqueous humor so what happens in the glaucoma let's move now to the disease glaucoma the general pressure provided by the aqueous humor is 21 mm of hg if the pressure increases from the 21 mm of hg then the disease occur is known as glaucoma now this pressure is specific for the aqueous humor aqueous humor is responsible to to induce or to cause the pressure and due to that pressure what will happen then that will cause the blindness you know if the pressure increases here in the aqueous humor this pressure is uh, provided or subjected to the complete eye or to all the uh, uh, you can say all the layers of the eye and as a result the very sensitive layer retina will be damaged due to this pressure if retina gets damaged you know visual sensations are lost and result is blindness now what happens the aqueous humor accumulates here and due to which the pressure is generated if the pressure gets increased from 21 mm of hg then this pressure is responsible to cause the damage of retina now uh, further we will go that how the aqueous humor is formed and uh, why this aqueous humor pressure is generated how it is formed why it is generated the first question is how it is formed aqueous humor second question how the pressure is generated these two questions we'll hear now how it is formed the aqueous humor is formed by the ciliary epithelial this is ciliary body ciliary muscles and the epithelial layer present here ciliary epithelial they are responsible to produce the aqueous humor then this aqueous humor when it is produced its path is to move in between first of all it will move in between the lens and the iris it will move like this down between the iris and lens and it will get the entry through the pupil to the anterior chamber of the eye from here its path is to move to the side region peripheral region to the corner between the cornea this is the cornea and the iris now if it we need enters this portion and its target is this small hole known as canal of schlem through which then it passes and it enters into the another pipe like system a venous system known as suprasclerotic venous system and like this the aqueous humor is circulated now what happens that causes the accumulation of aqueous humor here or that causes the stop stop that stops the flow of aqueous humor outside or that inhibits the drainage system of the aqueous humor this is the drainage system there are two reasons and those two reasons are called as the types of the glaucoma glaucoma is of two types one is open angle glaucoma and another one is close angle glaucoma what is open angle glaucoma and what is close angle glaucoma the problem is in this portion let me erase this and we'll make you understand further open and close type number 1 type number 2 what happens in the open angle glaucoma now first let us know open angle this is the iris this one and this is the cornea and this canal of schlem is here and uh, here is the venous system supravenous supply this portion the portion between the iris and the cornea this is given the name is angle this is called the angle that we mean when this angle is wide enough that is called open angle when this angle is narrowed or becomes close then this is given the name as close angle 
So now this is open angle and this is close angle. This is iris and this is cornea. Now the angle between the iris and cornea is, you can say, closed now, narrowed. Because of this narrowness, we call this as closed angle glaucoma and because of this, we will call it open angle glaucoma. Now we got the concepts of open angle and closed angle. Now the system, the, we are to, the, the, the thing that we must know that is about the pressure generation, how the pressure builds, whether it is open or closed angle. Pressure builds because of the, when there is a stop or hindrance provided by any mean to the drainage system of the aqueous humor. In the open angle glaucoma, what happens, this canal of shlim, this is closed by the tubular meshworks. When the aqueous humor comes and it is supposed to drain out to the suprasclerotic venous system, because of this canal of shlim, when it is closed, the tubular meshworks are closed, then the aqueous humor is not drained out. So then this aqueous humor will accumulate here, which will then result in the increase in the pressure of the aqueous humor. So which will then cause a damage to the retina. And this type of damage is known as open angle glaucoma. When the angle is open, but the canal of Schlem is closed due to tubular meshworks. This is called open angle glaucoma. Now what is closed angle glaucoma? In the closed angle glaucoma, what happens? The aqueous humor formed by the severe epithelial will move through and will come into the pupil, through the pupil into the anterior chamber. Now again, its path is to, to drain to the suprasclerotic venous supply by means of canal of Schlem. Now in the closed angle glaucoma, what happens is that the aqueous humor is produced and accumulation starts here. The reason is that the canal of Schlem is open, but the angle is now narrow. Now the angle is closed, very small. Now due to this, when a pipe, you know, when a pipe gets narrow, then the fluid, if it is moving through that narrow pipe, its pressure will be high then. Now due to this narrowness of the angle, the aqueous humor will accumulate here and its pressure will increase. And you know, when there is an increase in the pressure, that is going to damage the retina again. When this type of damage occurs, then again, this will cause, you know, the glaucoma, which is due to the increase in pressure. And this type of glaucoma is known as closed angle, in which the angle is closed, but the canal of Schlem is open. And due to this closure, the pressure is inverted. That's why this is known as closed angle glaucoma. And the open angle glaucoma, the angle is open, but the canal of Schlem is closed due to which the aqueous humor will stay in the anterior portion and its amount will increase, its concentration will increase due to which the pressure is increased and that pressure is responsible to damage the eye, especially the sensitive layer of the eye known as retina or retina. When it is damaged, then the visual sensations are lost. So that's called open angle and closed angle glaucoma with a little bit of anatomy of the glaucoma. Now we move to the pharmacology of glaucoma. Glaucoma can be treated by a number of drugs. You can stop the secretion of the aqueous humor by any means the drug that is going to do its action. So general drugs that we know that we read in these parasympathomimetics that were uh, pilocarpine, which is responsible and the very first and prominent whose use is to uh, treat the glaucoma and uh, we also have carbonic anhydrase inhibitors these are another category or class of drug carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and we also have another drug that is given the name is timolol which is a beta selective drug antagonist this is a parasympathetic and you can say cholinomimetic or cholinergic agonist and this is sympathetic antagonist. So these are acting here on the eye. Their site is pilocarpine. 
as it is the parasympathetic so it is responsible to stimulate the m3 receptor uh, on the ciliary epithelial cells and uh, which is responsible to increase the secretion and timolol which is the beta antagonist and especially more specifically that uh, are uh, responsible to cause you know beta when it is stimulated it will cause what beta 1 or uh, beta 2 beta 3 you know about their mechanism of action when they are stimulated they are supposed to increase cyclic amp and uh, here we will give the beta antagonist so when we give it and we'll stop the secretion of the aqueous humor due to which then again glaucoma is treated so further pharmacology